Take the crumbs from starving soldiers, they won't die. Take the bread from hungry children, they won't cry. But without dreams, we all will die. You've got to dream. Don't lose your dream for yourself, for your future, for your family. The dreams of love and enterprise and travel and doing things, becoming something unique on your journey here. Don't lose your dream. Do some dreaming. That's long range goals. You've got to have those. So that's number one. Here's the second part of goals, short range. Short range goals. That's your goals for tomorrow, this week, this month, this year, the immediate future. We call these confidence builders. Because if you set up something short range, go for it. Get it. Latch, latch onto it. Work hard. Accomplish it. That starts building your strong feelings to go for your dream. Now, I've divided goals into three categories. Here they are. Number one is economic. That's your goals for money, income, business, profit, production. Economics. Make sure you've got your economics well planned. Economics plays a major role in everybody's life. Economics is major, which means it ought to be meticulously well planned for tomorrow, this week, this month, this year, long range. What if you ask somebody tomorrow if you could see their meticulously well-planned list of economic goals? What would they probably say? They say, you some kind of a nut? You must be weird. Hey, I found out what success is. Success is doing what the failures won't do. Make sure you've got your economics well-planned. It'll put you in the top 5%. One of the key little subjects we talk about on the weekend is the seven fundamentals for wealth and happiness. And that's one of them, well-planned economics. It's a fundamental if you want to do well. Join the top 5%. Anybody in this room can join the top 5%, if you will. Now here's the second category of goals, things. Make a list of the things you want. And on my list of things, now I put everything. Little things as well as major things. Doesn't matter how small it is, it goes on my list. I used to just put major things, cars, homes. I don't do that anymore. I now load my list with everything, everything. And the reason is part of the fun of having a list is checking it off, that's it. Boy, at the end of the day, if you can go, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Whatever it is, right? You get into the habit. So load up your list, the things you want. Now, when you check off something major, celebrate. That's an important point to make. Celebrate your achievements. Live it up. Have a party. When you reach something you've worked for for a while. See, we all grow from two experiences. One is called the pain of losing. The other one is called the joy of winning. We need both of them. Amplify them as much as you can, which also means make losing painful. If you set up something, fooled around, didn't get it, put it on yourself. On the other side, if you did get it, congratulate yourself. Self-congratulations is a sign of maturity. Seeking congratulations is a sign of immaturity. But hey, winning and losing, see, that's what it's all about. That's the name of the game. Now, some people lead such mediocre lives. At the end of the day, they don't know whether they're winning or losing. <laughs> They got no clue. Guy's just going through the day with his fingers crossed. There's a better way. Okay, here's the third category of goals. Personal development. Put those goals together. Personal development goals. That's your goals to be stronger, more decisive, be a speaker, be a leader, learn a language, all kinds of skills. Okay. The whole weekend seminar was designed to improve all your skills so that you walk away more skillful. And that's what you want, the personal development skills. That's what attracts, that's what brings good things to your life, the person you become more skillful. Now, this is quite a package to work on. Economics, things, personal development. For tomorrow, this week, this month, this year, long range. It's a luxury to pursue what makes you happy. It's a moral obligation to pursue what you find meaningful. And that doesn't mean it's easy. It might require sacrifice. If you need to change your job too, let's say you have uh, family and, 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 and children and, and a mortgage, you have responsibilities. You've already picked up those responsibilities. You don't just get to walk away scot-free and say, well, I don't like my job, I quit. That's no strategy. But what you might have to do is you think, well, this job is killing my soul. All right, so what do I have to do about that? Well, I have to look for another job. Well, no one wants to hire me. It's like, okay, maybe you need to educate yourself more. Maybe you need to update your, your curriculum vitae, your resume. Maybe you need to overcome your fear of being interviewed. Maybe you need to sharpen your social skills. Like, you, you have to think about these things strategically. If you're going to switch careers, you have to do it like an intelligent, responsible person. That might take you a couple of years of, of, of effort to do properly. When you say pursue something meaningful, is it important mm -hmm. to have a vocation? I, I think it's more important to, to have a, an ethos an ethic. So I have a program, for example, called the Future Authoring Program, which is a writing program that enables people to develop a vision for their life and then to develop a strategy. And so it's based on the idea 
imagine that, and it's an extension of the ideas in the book, or at least something along the same lines. The first thing that you want to do is figure out, imagine you were taking care of yourself, like you were someone you cared for, which is rule number two, by the way, essentially. Then you should figure out, well, if you could have what you needed and wanted, what would it be? What sort of friends would you have? What would your family relationships look like? How would you conduct yourself with your children? How would you educate yourself? You need to think through how it is that your life could be properly arranged if you had that ability. And then you can aim at that. And the funny thing is, is that if you do posit a goal of that sort and work towards it, you will move towards it. The goal will change because you'll learn things along the way. But I mean, I've, I've dealt with hundreds of people in my clinical and consulting practice, and we set a goal, we develop a vision and work towards it. And it, it, things inevitably get better for people. So it's not a luxury, it's, it's difficult. It's a moral responsibility and it isn't happiness. It's, it's not, the pursuit isn't for happiness. That meaning is what you have to, to buttress yourself against the tragedy of life. It's like engagement. We're having an engaging conversation. You know, we'll walk away from this and hopefully the, the people who are watching, they'll walk away and they'll think that was worthwhile. It's like, okay, think about what that means. Mm -hmm. It means that despite the fact that you're a fragile, damaged, mortal creature, you found something to do that announced itself as worthwhile. Mm -hmm. That's meaning. It's an instinct. Like, it, it's not, it's a deep, deep instinct. Uh, I, it's, it's maybe the deepest instinct. It's like a form of vision, except it's not a, it's not a, like an embodied, it's not a, a specified sense. Meaning tells you when you're in the right place. And the right place is between chaos and order. And those are real places, your hemispheres. Like, your right hemisphere is roughly evolved, let's say, to deal with things you don't understand. That's chaos. And your left is there to deal with things you do understand. And you can't just stay with the things you do understand, because you already understand them. And you can't just stay with what you don't understand, because then you're lost. And I'm not saying I'm a great man, but I'm telling you this here, though. I ain't what I was. You might not. <laughs> hey, man, let me tell you something. You might not think all that much of me, but you would if you knew what I was. If you'd have saw me when I had a severe stuttering problem and I couldn't talk outside my house, you would think much of me if you saw me when I flunked out of school. I'm on my third marriage. You would think a whole lot more of me if you knew me when I was living in that car for three years. Cause see what I, what he turned me into was something I never saw that I, I didn't think I'd ever be there. People come to me from everywhere. I meet with kings and queens. I was in Botswana with the president and the first lady of Botswana. Then I met the, the, the crown prince of Abu Dhabi. He came out of his chair at the race to come meet me. You know why he came to meet me? Just simply because of my gift. I make people laugh. It put me in the presence of great men. That's what my gift has done for me. That's what your gift will do for you. That scripture is talking about you.